Aruli, class of 89. <laughs> he is the recipient of the Father Greg Tolis Award for Distinguished Service. Father Greg's sister Beth is here this evening. If she'll give a little wave. <laughs> Father Greg was a 74 grad and much beloved. I've heard he's performed many sacraments and marriages over the years for Kilmarie alums. And he was very well known for all of his work, his servant heart, at the Church of St. Philip in North Minneapolis. He overcame his own health issues to be a force for good in the communities that he worked in. And we know that he carried on that sense of belonging for the people that he encountered. Lino's done the same in his own special way. He parlayed his theater skills, public speaking, and love for mass communications into being a world-class content creator, as my children tell me, in the Catholic media world. He's been an advisor to the upper echelons of the Catholic Church. He's a travel guide extraordinaire. I love following him on social media for those great images of you and all sorts of fun places. And if you know more recently, he changes lots of light bulbs for his mom. So this is really good. We're glad to have you back home in the Twin Cities. And we know that you always carry Hill Marie in your heart. So thank you for all the humor and adventure that you bring to your Catholic faith and for spreading that out with the masses. We invite you up to be the recipient this evening. So uh, I've been asked to keep my remarks down to 35 minutes. Is that right? I don't, I don't think that's going to be possible, but the clock's up there. So 35 to 37 minutes it is. Uh, it's great to be back in this building, but specifically in a place that we used to have Saturday detention. <laughs> Show of hands, who here was a Saturday detention? Of course, my, my classmates over there. Anybody else? Great memories of Saturday detention right here. And it was in this very room I said, one day I'll be honored in this place. <laughs> and the teacher was like, shut up, you can't talk in here. I'm like, I'm going to show you. <laughs> so and I wish that story was not true. <laughs> last week I was in New York. So I, I lived in New York City for the last 15 years and moved back to Minnesota a couple of years ago. And uh, last week I was in New York and I was waiting outside of a restaurant uh, to have lunch with a buddy of mine. And I was doing the typical New York thing, which is I had my earbuds in and my eyes down, making no eye contact with anybody. Uh, and uh, peripherally I saw something coming towards me. And so I looked up and uh, some, some like teenage kid was walking up and he said, are you Lino Ruli? And I said, hmm, unfortunately, yeah. And he goes, uh, I recognize the nose immediately. <laughs> Please keep in mind I work in radio. And so I said, oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, he was there with his parents uh, and his sister. And he was like, oh, I've been listening to your show since I was a kid. I'm like, you are a kid. How about Saturday detention? And he, uh, he was like, can I get a selfie? I'm like, well, let's have your mom take a picture. And it's a selfie. And uh, so the mom tried to take a picture. She took a video. And like a half hour later, he took a selfie. And then uh, he goes, oh, I'm, I'm discerning high school seminary. I said, what? He said, I'm discerning high school seminary. I go, oh, don't do that. And uh, he's like, why not? I go, high school's tough enough. You don't need the pressure of seminary, but you're on your way because you're asking God, what do I want to do with my life? The fact that you're asking God, what do I want to do with my life is great. High school without the pressure of seminary, if God wants you, he'll call you to the seminary, you know, when you're in college or even after college. Or, that's great you're asking the questions. And uh, I thought it was the right uh, story to start with considering the award I'm getting is named after a priest. <laughs> but... but the story was because as he was telling me about his high school experience, I was thinking, oh, I'll be coming to Hill Murray in just a couple days, thinking back on my high school experience. And first of all, uh, who am I to give advice to anybody, let alone uh, future priests? Because when I was in high school, and uh, th th those of you who went to high school with me know, nobody thought I'd be standing here. And so... The fact that I'm standing here is a, a testament to the Catholic education system because I did not want to come to Hill Murray. I, I had gone to public school. I went to public grade school, public junior high, and then 
my parents told me I'd be going to Hill Murray, and I was so surprised, because I'm like, I don't even play hockey. Like, what, <laughs> like, like, what am I gonna do there? And, and, and they made me go to this Donald's store and put these <laughs> polyester pants on, and, and I was like, is this a test to see if I can still believe in God after this nonsense? And then they had to make me cut mullets were a thing at the time, and they made me cut my hair. Now, of course, I only have short hair, but it was this whole thing, and I'm like, well, I, high school, it was at Hill Murray that my freshman year, I took an AV course. And in 1989, excuse me, in 1985, that was really something to be anything audiovisual. Uh, Hill Murray was a place I got to learn what I loved. Hill Murray and the Catholic experience is a place where I was able to answer questions that I wasn't asking. It was a place that I was able to find out what I was passionate about, what I was good at, and what I was bad at. I took a public speaking course and I realized I'm not good at writing speeches. Some of you can probably attest to that now. But uh, I was okay speaking, so I stole Jerry Seinfeld's uh, stand-up act that I had seen recently. And this is before the days of YouTube or the TV show Seinfeld. So nobody knew this material. <laughs> How I didn't get an A+, I'm still very surprised. And I know who that teacher was. And I'm like, eh, you gotta stick to the material here. I guess it was the delivery. I found out I was good at. I found out what I was really bad at. I joined the wrestling team. <laughs> the only matches I won were when the opposing team didn't have somebody in my weight class. <laughs> Our coach would be like, Ruli, if you can drop another seven pounds, you get a win. I'm like, coach, I'm 98 pounds. It's my junior year of high school. I'd like to eat this year. But I would like to win as well, so that's what I did. So Hill Murray was a place where I got to learn what God was asking me to do before I was asking God what he wanted me to do. And so it was a place I got to learn about faith before I was asking questions about faith. It was a place I got to learn about broadcasting before there was really a thing called broadcasting. It was where I learned wrestling is fixed. And <laughs> that AWA and WWE and all, everything else, I'll tell you, I learned the hard way. It's all about weight class. And so I am very grateful to be back at Hill Murray, I'm very grateful not only for the experience of Hill Murray because I don't know where I would be without this high school. I, I don't know where I would have learned the things about faith and I don't know where I'd have learned the things about broadcasting what I was passionate about if I hadn't come here. If my parents weren't right, ugh, who likes to say that? And so I am very grateful, grateful to be back at Hill Murray and I'm very grateful for this award. So thank you everybody. Oh, you know, good work. Way in under the time there. <laughs> <laughs> Our next recipient is Kelly Regan. She is the recipient of the Ron Ryan Jr. Class of 1985 Award for Community Leadership. Ron's mom, Kelly, is here, and widow Anne. They'll wave. Woohoo! Thank you. Several of Ron's classmates are here, as well as past recipients of this award from Kelly's own family. Ron Ryan Jr. was a decorated St. Paul officer, and he gave his life in service of community. I don't think there's any greater honor than someone who wins this award. Kelly has the heart of gold. She's an effectively quiet leader. Her resume speaks for itself, but her compassion goes well beyond what you could ever read on the page. She's very dedicated to education and young people and takes time out of her own schedule, which is pretty busy if you read what she's got going on, to use her incredible skills of language and Spanish to tutor young people. I don't know that she'd ever tell you this, but I know quietly she's impacted hundreds of lives probably through her work, both on boards and just one-on-one -on -one with someone sitting across the table making sure that they have a better life than they've started out with. She makes a difference. 
I welcome her to the stage to receive this award. Hi. <laughs> I've always told my kids uh, who ha were born at the intersection of two cultures to be the bridge because that is where the beauty lies. I'm Kelly, as you were told. Grateful to be part of this Hill Murray community. It's a very special place that has educated and graced our family for three generations. I feel uh, compelled to share this award with my family for many reasons, uh, for your support. Uh, they always show up, like today. Uh, for allowing me time away from the piles on my desk. And uh, for trusting that I was in fact attending all those board meetings and not eating tacos at the food truck in Prescott, Wisconsin. <laughs> I do save that for weekends, though, and by the way, I highly recommend it. Uh, I'm humbled by this nomination because of Ronnie, a dear friend of our family, and also because I share it with our parents, Don and Jean, who set us on this path some 50 years ago. Uh, thank you also to the cast of characters who uh, conspired, uh, or rather submitted this nomination on my behalf. You know who you are. Thank you to uh, Don and Jean for the gift of a Catholic education. The administrators and educators at Hill Murray that, that day in and day out set the bar high, keep the faith, and teach kids about life. It's a true community where kids feel safe, appreciated, loved, and can find their best self, as Rube uh, attested to. Uh, the many cherished friendships uh, from Hill Murray, individuals and families that support each other unconditionally, never cease to amaze us. And for that, too, we are very grateful. Uh, thank you to the visionary leaders, the boards, the staff, and so many gracious supporters who have cast the net wide, like Simon, Andrew, James, and John, who chose to follow Christ and build a community that was founded on love. A community that better reflects our changing east side and the families who have made their way here from afar. Education is a gift. It cannot be erased by political, society, ec societal, economic, cultural, or geographic shifts. The priests, the brothers, like Brother Francis and Brother Martin, and all, and the sisters, and all their cohorts, and the many lay people that serve alongside them, have left an indelible mark on us and on the countless children across the globe for centuries. It's an honor and a privilege to in some small way support their work. Those of you who know me uh, know, know that I spent half of my life, uh, my adult life in Mexico, raising a beautiful family, uh, studying, working, and on occasion enjoying uh, a tequila or two. This invaluable experience has afforded a deep understanding of many unmet needs and challenging circumstances. Prior to living in Mexico, I worked uh, at Notre Dame with families in the migrant and seasonal farm worker program of Indiana. I fell in love with the work and never turned back. Cesar Chavez, the famous community and bridge builder in the 60s, built a life on the premise that poverty damages our dignity, but once we are educated and overcome our challenges, we can never go back. He said, from the depths of despair, people can organize themselves to solve their own problems and fulfill their own needs with dignity and strength. His quote highlights the importance of working together, self-sufficiency, drawing strength from adversity, and that once on that path, there is no turning back. We all win. Uh, I, um, si se puede, meaning yes we can, was the battle cry of Cesar Chavez. It was used to unite 
the people, and it was born out of the Mexican migrant worker movement in the U.S. That sentiment traveled back across the Rio Grande and continues to be very popular in Mexico yet today. To all the people who support the many students and families they do not know in our Catholic schools, I want to share a little insight so that you can better appreciate these families and begin to understand the tremendous impact that your support has had on the lives of these people and on strengthening uh, our fine community. Many immigrants in the U.S. remain invisible or in the shadows. This is what this is what circumstances demand, but I would like to introduce you to a girl that I know. She was born in the mountainous region of Puebla on the border of Oaxaca. At the tender age of five, she carried water up the mountainside from the dangerous river below where they went to wash clothes and set them to dry on large rocks. She made tortillas by hand and cooked them over an open fire on a metal griddle called a comal. She had many siblings, born every year or two until they were eight. She went to live with her uncle to attend the nearest school, 15 miles from her home and family. She watched her mother die at 34, they don't know why, as there was no doctor to attend to her in her pueblo. She returned home from her uncle's for good, for good in fourth grade, there was so much to do. She stayed at home to help with her younger brothers until she was 14, when she went to La Ciudad de Mexico to live and help another family. She sent all her money back home. She, she, she brought him to Mexico City when her father became gravely ill. She held him in the back seat of a blue van as they went from hospital to hospital in search of a doctor. She found help from a friend of a friend and, a, and her father was treated, recovered, and able to return home. She saved money by way of a tanda. Twelve women and girls joined a savings cohort. Each person contributed $100 every month to a pool for a year. They each drew a number from one to 12 to learn the month that they would receive the full amount. One by one, from January to December, each woman received their $1,200 share. She got her money in September. She had a dream of brighter future for the children she may one day have. She went on a long journey together with three brother, brothers-in-law and 18 men when she was 24 years old. She was in a truck, crossed a river, and lost in a desert for over a week. She could not go on, and she asked her brothers-in-law to leave her under the tree she saw in the distance. She was carried out of that desert by the brave men in her family and by the grace of God. She made it to a cold place after being held up in an apartment building in Arizona and traveling north by Greyhound bus. She did not speak English yet. She worked two jobs by day in the food service industry. She had two children who she adores and who adore her. She cleaned offices and cared for her boss's mother who suffers from Alzheimer's at night. She alone supported her family and still sent money home. She has an altar to the Virgin of Guadalupe in her dining room and a rich faith life that she shares with her children and others that she has chosen as her family. And this is just too good not to share. This is her uh, altar from her dining room. She... Uh, cannot see her father, but sends her daughter home every summer to be with him and the family that she left behind. Fast forward, 2023. She watched her daughter graduate with honors from a Catholic high school. She cried as she read the translation screens in Spanish and understood that the teachers were thanking her and all the parents and scholars for their many sacrifices. She watched her daughter apply and get accepted at 17 U.S. universities across the country. She visited a few. 
She committed to support her daughter who received a scholarship to study business at a, at a prestigious Catholic university in town. She would keep both her children by her side. She was happy, she was tired, and she was immensely grateful. Cesar Chavez says, we cannot seek achievement by ourselves and forget about progress and prosperity for our community. We are winning because ours is a revolution of the mind and the heart. Do not underestimate the magnitude of your generosity, be it time or treasure. Si se puede. Yes, we can. If she can do it, so can we. Another wise man once said, who we are, where we've been, where we're destined, we travel together. Well, we know we have two honorees that can be the MC for next year. I'll just say that. Our third recipient for this evening is Father George Grafsky, a member of the Hill High School class of 1963. He is the recipient of the Lasallian Award. The Lasallian Award is inspired by the Christian brothers who founded Hill High School in 1959, and their worldwide commitment to faith, learning, and education became the hallmark of that high school. The charism of faith paired with action inspired generations of pioneers and continues to resonate with our students today. Father George has over 50 years of pastoral service with this archdiocese, but he took a special ministry to work with first responders. And I say that actually touches my heart. My grandfather was a firefighter and I know how deeply they are committed to their own communities. So to serve them is wonderful. You minister to people in unique ways. They're the ones first on the scene when people are in distress. Sometimes joy, sometimes there's a baby in the back seat, right, being born. Other times, it's the worst day of their life. And you have to do the pastoral work of making sure that those first responders can get up again and do it the next day. It takes a special heart, a pioneering heart, and we welcome Father George to the stage. It's kind of interesting. This is my first time ever in this building. <laughs> Being from Hill, you know, uh, we weren't always welcomed here <laughs> back in those days. But it's good, really good to be here. You know, I was thinking, well, I listen to all the people talk who've been all over the world, and I've never left Minnesota. In fact, I've never left Lee Sewer County. <laughs> so I kind of wonder, what is it that I do? that somebody wants to give me an award. I think what it is for me is I'm very humble that I'm here because I know what I do is not because of me. I have to face it. You know, everything I do, I know I'm a priest, but everything I do is because of God. You know, when I was at Hill, I have, have to chuckle. When I left Hill, you know, at Hill, I made the honor roll once in my four years of high school. If you know why, that's because you had to have a B in religion. <laughs> I don't know if you still have to have a B in religion to get on the honor roll. But I didn't make it because I didn't always have a B in religion. Yet here I am. You know, something happened. And that's my little thought I want to, you know, I, I was scared, you know. When I first got our day and I kind of felt, God, here I am. You know, it's kind of like on a nice big bicycle built for two. Get on the back, God. I'm going to take you places. Let's go. I learned fast. That's not the way God works. He has to be in front and steer, and I've got to be in back and pedal. And I said that, okay, God, you know where you want me to go. Let's go. And I have to say that was one of the biggest moments of my life. I've never been more excited and scared in my life 
than going where God wanted me to go. I mean, who would believe that I, look at me, would go into a submarine? But I went in the Navy. I was in a submarine. I got picked up in a helicopter and taken for a ride. Who would believe I would do that? I was scared stiff. But we did it. And we were glad to serve the, the Navy and the people. I had two uh, stints at Great Lakes Naval Hospital in Chicago. And I learned a lot from working with those wonderful servicemen. Then after that, go chase fires. Get on a fire engine. Right now, I kind of quit that because I can't get up on a fire engine anymore. <laughs> that first step alone, I need a ladder. <laughs> but it is, it's hard to go and to be at somebody's home and they're watching it burn down. What do I say to them? You know, the fireman's up on top and he's got a chainsaw and he's cutting a hole in their roof. But the fire's over here. Why are they cutting a hole on my roof? She tried to explain to them, well, if the fire doesn't go up and out, it keeps going sideways. And the faster it gets out, the more they can save your house. So you learn what you can say and do and be with people to see them through. What did they do? First thing I always say is, where's your insurance? <laughs> and you go. Same thing true with police. Be a police chaplain. You've got to be kidding. That's scary sometimes. Remember the very first time I rode with a deputy. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. And we get a call and he says, the dispatcher tells him, there's a car on the side of the road. Check it out. So we go along, we pull up behind the car. Yeah, there's two people in the car. You can see them in the front seat. He pulls up behind him. He gets out. And as he's walking to the car, he says, Padre, get on the passenger side. He says, you want me to do what? Get on the passenger side. Oh, okay. I get up. I go stand in the back of the car on the passenger side. He goes, tries the door, knocks on the window. People inside don't answer. He says, Padre, go on the passenger side. Open the door. Go in there and wake him up. He says, you want me to do what? So I did. I walked up. I thought, oh, let the door be locked. Please, let the door be locked. I go up and click. Oh, it's opening. So I go in and I give the guys a big shove and I run back to the car. And the officer just stands there and goes, uh, 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 uh. But it is, you know, it, it is, I have to say, not one person in my life of ever working in a tragedy, you know, be it a drowning, be it a suicide, be whatever it was where I was with the family, have they ever said to me, Father, thank you for what you said? Never. Because I never said anything. The important thing, and they always say to me, is thank you for being there. That's all it takes to show up and to be there. You know, sometimes you wonder, you know, going to a wake for somebody you know who died, what do you say to the person that survived? Often nothing. Just be there. You don't know how important presence is to people. And that's what I really have learned in my work with the fire department and the police department is being there, being present, how important that is. And I found out, in fact, that God can take you to places where you've never been. I say that because a few years ago, I got a, a call from our, my secretary at Montgomery. He said, Father, you got a call from somebody in Ireland. I says, Ireland? I've never been to Ireland. I don't know anybody there. He's going to call you tomorrow at 9 o'clock. So, okay, 9 o'clock the next morning, I'm in the office, and the phone rings, and she goes, it's him. So I pick it up, and I says, hello, this is Father George. Yes. I want to know if you can help me. If I can help you, how can I help you? You're in Ireland, and I'm here in America. Well, I just want your advice. Okay, what do you need to know? I want you to help me get my girlfriend back. After a few minutes, I knew he would never get her back. In fact, he would never have a girl, period. He was so possessive and demanding and jealous of whatever that girl would do. I just thought, but I had to say, why did you call me? 
why'd you call me to, to answer that question? He said, I read about you. You read about me in Ireland? Come on, you gotta be kidding. No, no, you were in the Catholic Herald of the United Kingdom's Catholic newspaper. Really? So I looked it up and lo and behold, to my surprise, there was an article, 10 most amazing priests. I was number five. You know, I, 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 my only comment to all of you is, God's gonna take you places you're afraid. I was. I still don't know why I do some of the things I do, but I know God wants me to be there. And presence is important. Never be afraid of what God wants you to do. In fact, let your kids know that. Never be afraid. God's gonna ask you to do things might seem you can't do, and you're right. I could never do the things I'm doing if I didn't believe and follow what God wanted me to do. Don't be afraid when God asks you to do things. You'd be surprised. You'll be excited. I know I've had the most exciting 52 years as a priest in my life. I do it all over again. But you have to say, okay, God, I'm not in charge. You are. Take me where you want me to go. Enjoy it when you do. But thank you. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. We're going to do a little picture. Do you see Elise? I think we'll pick up where Father George just left off. Presence is important, and I think that could also apply to Patricia Black, class of 1962 at Archbishop Murray High School. Yep. She is the recipient of the Benedictine Award, named in honor of our sisters of St. Paul Monastery next door, who founded Archbishop Murray Memorial High School in 1958 and its order was dedicated to the educational mission of young women, molding them into servant leaders who espouse hospitality and contemplation and inspiring them to use their gifts in the world. I think there's no doubt that you took that to heart. Patricia learned, took the lessons that she had at home and at school, and she indeed parlayed that into good work. She created spaces and programs for the disenfranchised and marginalized people so they could feel a sense of belonging and well-being. She used her advocacy to further the rights of those who could not defend themselves. She did this one person at a time, one cause at a time. People came to know, love, and respect through Patricia's outreach. It's our honor to welcome her to the stage for the Benedictine Award. I had to be last, you know. Who can follow all those guys? Okay. I'm humbled. I'm humbled to receive this award, to stand in front of so many of you who also deserve recognition. In my own eyes, I have only lived my life and done my work putting one foot in front of the other, inspired by the principles that I absorbed in this institution. I have always said that the Benedictines saved my life, but perhaps it's more accurate to say they gave me life. They infused my being with and, and imparted their grace to me. I was not always a gracious recipient. There were many aspects to this formation of my world, it is interesting to me to recall poignant moments that were somehow critical turning points. Of course, I must acknowledge the forbearance of my family. My family members who have taken many deep breaths as I hold forth on this or that and who have remained good-hearted. Your forgiveness and understanding of my foibles is appreciated. 
Beyond them, I focus now on the role of the Benedictines in the formation of my spirit, my life. Immediately, I, call, I recall Sister Rochelle playing Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake. I can feel the strains of music as they wafted from her phonograph all the way through the auditorium. I had never heard classical music outside of church before. I, it stimulated me to seek classical music in many forms throughout my life. Similarly, Sister Irina brought me to the secret smiles of Etruscan sculpture, which I joyfully recalled years later in a museum in Italy. Sister Irina inspired me to study art history and to collect art. Who could not be impressed by Sister Claire's vast knowledge of history, which led me to a college major? In fact, Sister Claire was responsible for my attending St. Kate's. She took such interest in me and in all of my classmates who are here tonight. Sister Helene, Miss Rumley, Sister Judith, each planted seeds for my love of languages. And Miss Rumley, whose devotion to Eleanor Roosevelt stimulated my curiosity about feminism, which I have pursued during my entire life. I can still recite much of the creation by James Weldon Johnson, which Miss Daly coached my English class to recite. Poetry feeds my soul to this day, as does the theater, which Miss Daly directed tirelessly. So, so much fun. But no one touched me with more respect and kindness than Sister Patrick. How did these riches that these women gave me lead to a life of service? I listened with my heart's ear to the tune and rhythm of the life of Jesus as exemplified and modeled by these strong and powerful women. Quite simply, I wanted to be like them. I was impelled from within to serve, to serve in some way. There was a lot of confusion to, to work through in the post-Vatican II world that I entered as an adult. Exciting and scary times. To stay the course meant that I had to be true to my spirit, to my intuitive self, to the values that I cherished, to teach, to support, to facilitate growth in others. Initially, my career led me to teaching first in St. Paul, then in Arequipa, Peru, and finally on the south side of Chicago, where I remained for 10 years. Throughout both of these experiences, I really learned more than I taught. I became deeply aware of the physical and emotional problems of, of marginalized persons, ultimately leading me to, to he, hear and heed the calling of the social work profession. For me, it was a calling, a deep response to the suffering in the world around us a personal, internal, spiritual, and sacred connection, a push to muster the courage to come forth and serve those who needed me. I spent 40 years helping individuals, families, institutions to find their own light, to live their truth. I became a witness to human suffering and human healing and human growth. Doing what I could to facilitate change, to help improve lives. That is what I received here, and that was my gift to give back to the universe, to pass on and hopefully to have done my part to make the world a better place, one person, one trainee, one family, one class, one program at a time. Thank you for this honor and recognition. We've come to the 
part of the night where we have two new awards. But before we do that, I just want to give a round of applause to not only Judy Schwartz, who puts all of this together, right? <laughs> but also to the team, Tim O'Brien's team at Green Mill, if we can just give them a round of applause too for helping us this evening. So our next honoree is Autumn Ness, class of 1996. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> and she is the inaugural recipient of the Ashenbrenner Paulson Performing and Fine Arts Award. That's a mouthful right there. This twin named award honors the long serving and beloved Hill Murray principal and band director Frank Ashenbrenner, whose name, arguably more than others, is synonymous with the school for so many generations of pioneers. Joining us tonight is his daughter, Barb. Yeah, woo! <laughs> and even as we speak, his legacy continues. His grandson, Matthew, is with the rest of the Hill Murray Theater team at the State Theater for the Hennepin Theater Trust Spotlight event tonight. So a round of applause for those young performers. And the excellence here at Hill Murray can be attributed to the matchless Mark Paulson, who was the theater director from 1977 to 2007, and who put performing arts here at Hill Murray on the map, not only for the quality of their productions, but for the outreach to community members, parents, alumni, and students. The Christmas Carol production I know in particular is a fan favorite and continues in some form to this day. His wife, Lynn, and daughter, Heather, are here, and we're so glad that they could be here. <laughs> Autumn is actually a fan favorite in my own household when my kids used to go to the, the children's theater. So her skills were honed here in the theater program, and she used it as a springboard to explore the arts in her work and community outreach. Her sterling character only enhances the quality of those that she creates for the stage. It's our honor to bring Autumn Ness for this inaugural award. Wowee! Uh, I, I do just have to point out uh, that you all are giving the actress an award, but it's not the award with the word young in the title. Uh, there must be an oversight if someone wants to scratch that in on there and get the word young in that. I'd feel so good about that. Uh, 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 it, it should be repeated. It bears repeating. Judy Schwartz, you're a marvel. Good things happen when you answer your emails. You answer Judy's emails, you might find yourself getting a shiny award, right? Yeah. Uh, as we sit here at our tables with family and friends and neighbors and coworkers, uh, we all know we have people in our lives who invest in us, if we're lucky. I have my family here at this table. Hi, husband. Hi, kids. Hi, parents. Uh, and I have the two individuals for whom this award is named, Mr. A and Mr. Paulson. If you didn't know them, Mr. A was the human equivalent of a marching band. He was lanky, long-limbed, big strides, always on his way somewhere. Enthusiasm. He was all things music to me. He was a principal to some others here. Uh, really enviable head of white hair, cool curly hair. Mr. Paulson uh, was almost the opposite. He was like a curator of a museum like in an, uh, uh, sort of an architectural find. He was quiet, he was soft-spoken, he was in his office molding a huge theater program. We did, what, seven, eight shows a year? Tremendous community members, high schoolers, youth, little brothers and sisters at Christmas would come. And he was in this uh, back office, filled floor to ceiling with photos, set designs, scripts, uh, uh, projects to come, ideas. He was always full of ideas. These two individuals, like the people at this table, invested in me. And I don't mean a passive investment, a pat on the back, a general presence. I mean, this is an example. I had run out of theater classes to take by my junior year. I'd taken them all. All the electives were gone. And Mr. Paulson knew this and created a new class. He did this twice created a new class for anyone who wanted to keep going and ran out of arts classes. 
I think to myself, when was the last time I made my life harder? I made more work for myself because it would benefit someone else, because a kid wanted it. I don't know. But this is what he did. He didn't just create the class. He said, and now this is going to be a one where you all write. You make the content. I'm not going to pull Shakespeare. I'm not going to pull Chekhov. You make it. You know how scary it is to tell middle schoolers and high schoolers, create what you want, say what you want to say. That's a scary age group. Creating requires vulnerability, failure. You're asking these kids to do a huge job. So we did. He said, you talk enough, put it on paper. That's what we did. I, this year at CTC, I have my first show that I've ever written produced, and then it will be produced uh, subsequently at other theaters that, ha, that purchase it. I get to own that success. That's a, a success because someone invested in me. That is a success someone put into me, and I get to own it. That's amazing. Uh, both men have passed, both Mr. A and Mr. Paulson. I am now a ripple of their time here. And the thing about ripples is they don't dissipate if you keep adding to them. If you keep putting a drop in, little by little, the whole pond keeps going. I would be really, really proud to drop something into what they gave me to keep that ripple going. I know their families do. For that to be something I could stand here in a couple years when I'm still so young, and say I was able to keep a ripple going for somebody. That's a good life. That's a good life lived in art. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Frank, for your investment in me. I feel very, very proud to hold something with your names on it. Thank you. These are really tough acts to follow, I have to say. <laughs> I was not in performing arts, and it might show. <laughs> so our final award of the evening is also an inaugural award for the young alum. It's going this year to Chase Heider, who it's been my pleasure to get to know as his, with his involvement on the Alumni Innovation Committee. And it's a first time award for this institution with over 60 years of graduates. And it's time to honor the people who in their first 20 years since receiving their diploma make their mark in some way that gets recognition. We see their pioneer, straight, their pioneer traits in these early stages of their career, in their involvement in their communities, and we see how they inspire other young alums and the students here currently at the school. Chase, during his own Hill Murray career, lived the values of a pioneer in the classroom, in sporting competitions, and in his faith. He harnessed his innate curiosity to forge new scientific methods and business models, and he continues to break new ice to this day, right? We're delighted that he continues to share himself with this school. I know he met his wife, Chrissy, in chemistry class. My own daughter just took chemistry class, so I'm gonna have to find out if there were more sparks than just in their Bunsen burners. <laughs> so that'll be my question over the summer for her. But it's a complete honor to welcome Chase to the stage for the inaugural recipient of the Young Alum Award. tough acts to uh, follow. Autumn, if you want the young portion of this award, I'll give it up if you want to come and do a speech again. So, <laughs> all right. Well, I just want to start off and, and thank you very much uh, for the award. Um, I think uh, my experience here at uh, Hill Murray has really come full circle uh, today. Uh, I've kind of kind of realized when I was at uh, Hill Murray as a student, um, community and values were really two things uh, that I felt uh, were really 
developed. The community aspect, as was mentioned, I played a fair number of sports here. I was also part of the National uh, Honor Society, peer ministry, and also a math elite on the math team. Uh, some of the values that um, were alluded to in the intro, um, a natural curiosity, uh, day in and day out, I, I love uh, to learn and have that lifelong uh, learning in me. Uh, perseverance, continuing to stick with it, uh, being resilient, uh, and always uh, being authentic to myself. Uh, so after leaving Hill Murray, uh, I went just down the road on 94 to the University of Wisconsin-Madison uh, to kind of break out of my, my shell a little bit. Um, I really caught the entrepreneurial bug. I grew up with two parents, uh, engineering parents. I, I was straight-laced, ready to go get my engineering degree, go get my MBA, go work for 3M, and the, the rest was history. Uh, and that went kaput uh, about my sophomore or, or junior year. Um, in entrepreneurship, there's never really a clear path. It's a roller coaster of ups and downs, highs and lows. Uh, but the one thing that's consistent is, is the values and those that I developed here at Hill Murray. And there were a lot of uh, tough decisions that would have to be made. My values always carried me through uh, on those tough decisions. So for that, I'm extremely uh, grateful. Uh, another thing too is, a lot of my adventures uh, in entrepreneurship uh, brought me all across the country. Uh, I was in San Francisco, New York, uh, and then finally in Boston. Uh, and it seemed that the further I got away and the longer I stayed away from home, um, you know, I lost the sense of community. Uh, and I also began to focus too much on what I thought was truly success, which meant financial and career uh, aspirations. Um, and it really, uh, the last couple of years have been a, a big turnaround uh, and, and a big change uh, in my life. And I, I sense that I really miss this community. And, you know, at the time, two years ago, it was a really tough uh, decision. Now looking back, it's the best decision uh, I've ever made. And I came back home and, 2021 uh, had uh, the amazing ability to reconnect with this community. Uh, every Saturday, if my legs uh, allow it, I'm up here playing basketball with all, all the guys. I don't know how much longer that'll last, but having a blast doing that. Uh, joined the innovation uh, committee, uh, been able to reconnect with a lot of great alumni, one of them being uh, Jim Hansen, who's been an excellent advisor uh, on, on my current business uh, today. Uh, also got to experience my first Hill Murray auction, absolutely blown away and, and can't wait to attend uh, every year uh, moving forward. Um, and also uh, being able to reconnect with uh, family uh, and friends uh, that I developed here at Hill Murray and through my, my early years. Um, Let's see here, and I think, yeah, to, I mean, at the end of the day, I just couldn't be happier. I think my definition of success uh, has really morphed and changed, and I think that's something that I hope that I never lose perspective on, um, is that, um, you know, money, money can be nice, it can get you, uh, you know, certain things, but at the end of the day, uh, it's the people you surround yourself um, with in that community uh, that ultimately bring happiness and that's what I've, I've found and that's what the Hillmary community ha has brought. Um, just want to say a couple thank yous uh, as I wouldn't be here today without uh, a few people. Uh, the first being um, my wife. Uh, as um, it was talked about earlier, we um, I guess we're in two completely different social uh, classes while we were here in, in high school. Again, I was a math elite uh, and she was a uh, star athlete uh, in town. There is a picture that does exist. I, I got a Pioneer Award about 14 years ago, um, and I am beat red. I have an Argyle uh, sweater on that my mom bought me because she used to dress me back then. And her and her friends are bowing down to me uh, and talking about coming full, full circle. Um, we started dating two years ago, got married, bought a house, and we're about to have our first kid together and couldn't be more excited. So. Um, yeah, always up for the challenge and always there to support me. I really appreciate it. Um, Mom and Dad, again, appreciate all your, your love and support uh, throughout the years, all the guidance. Um, couldn't have done it without you. Um, they're kind of like uh, Tom Brady. Uh, they, you know, 
just recently retired about a year ago and uh, came out of retirement, just couldn't get enough of it and have been helping me day in and day out with the, the new business, uh, work on ice machines. Their, their basement is a complete mess right now. Uh, we've been going at it for about seven or eight days straight and I, I don't know where I'd be w without you right now, um, both with the business and in life. So thank you very much. Uh, Tori, um, been a wild ride and I, I love you as a sister and really appreciate, you know, the time we've been able to spend together the last two years in person and it's been so fun to watch you grow and mature. Um, you recently, you know, graduated with an MBA from Carlson School, couldn't be more proud of you and um, glad I could, you know, participate a little bit in your M mini MBA as you, you helped out with the, uh, with Claris over the last year. Um, to Mark and Ann uh, and Grandma Norma, thank you very much for all your support. I uh, appreciate you welcoming e me into the family and, and being here uh, tonight. Um, just want to say thank you to all the mentors and advisors and uh, the Hill Murray community for welcoming me back uh, with, with open arms and looking forward to continuing to help uh, and build this community into the future. Thank you. Well, as the mother of two pioneers right now, I'm really inspired that someday we'll be up here for members of their own class, maybe, that have gone out into the world and done something amazing. So please pray for all these students who are trying to discern the role of God in their life and the ways that they can use their gifts and talents as they go forward. I want to thank everybody for coming this evening. Feel free to stay around, socialize, enjoy more coffee, make sure the desserts are gone because we don't want to have to take all those home. Um, and that you get home safely and enjoy your summer. One last alumni event this year, next week on the 22nd, a party on the plaza. So hopefully to see some of you back for that. It's always a great night. And thank you again for honoring all of our honorees. Please give them one more round of applause. <laughs>